that the world couldn't ever offer. Rest then taps me in the back, reminding me that you are God. The God who loves me all the same. Despite all sorrow and shame, let my feet step into the solid ground. This sure foundation, a place where I can walk and rest and walk again. A place of grace. Thank you, Pastor Chan, for uh, just encouraging us with the Word of God as well in our giving. And of course, mainit po talaga ngayon sa labas. Tama po ba? Kaya, I, I really want to make sure na paglabas natin gabi na. Para hindi na ganun kainit. So indulge me as we stay here for a long time. Okay. Welcome. May mga nakausap ako kanina, siguro mga couple na nagsabi na uh, for the longest time, hindi sila nakapunta ng church face-to-face. Nag, ano lang sila, nag uh, uh, online. So welcome. Tapos may nakita rin ako kanina na from 2 p.m. service, Sunday. Uh, I'm sure, mag, pero mag-ano ka rin bukas kay Pastor Daniel. Regards lang kay Pastor Daniel. Okay. And we're going to look at the second part of our series, A Place of Grace. We're going to talk about resurrection. So bukas pa po talaga yung, yung celebration on. Tama? Yes. Kaya lang, sabi nga dati ni Pastor Jeff, preaching bukas ngayon ang broadcast. Okay. So uh, if you've also looked at our victory group, uh, DG app and U version na devotionals no nasa di, nasa U version din siya so you can also uh, check that out our place of grace devotionals now um and then siguro I just want to take this opportunity to pray kasi parang feeling ko pagod na pagod ako dahil sa init sa labas feeling ko lang po naman yun lord we thank you that we're here together. Thank you that you said in your word, where two or three are gathered, there you are with them. You are with us. So let, let this not be about how we feel, but about the truth of who you are. Thank you that when we praise you, when we worship you, we come into that place wherein we, we come to the terms of, your, of the reality of who you are. Hindi ka po nagbabago, hindi na babawasan, hindi na dadagdagan dahil sa praise and worship namin. Subalit kami ang binabago mo pag kami lumalapit sa inyo, pag kami nagsasamba, nagpupuri, pag kami nakikinig sa katotohanan mo, Panginoon. So let your words not return to you void. Let it accomplish the purpose for which you have sent it. Holy Spirit, we are open to receive your transformation, your healing, your provision, your cleansing, your forgiveness to receive, Lord God, even the grace to repent because we want to glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So, a place of grace. Um, yesterday was Viernes Santo. Tama? So ilan sa inyo kahapon parang Viernes Santo talaga ang Viernes nyo. Di ba? So na may experience kami kahapon ng asawa ko na oh, talagang Viernes Santo yung araw na to. Hindi so, ko na yan. Um, hindi ko na sabihin. But uh, you know, as we celebrate, as we remember uh, the death of Jesus yesterday, alam naman po natin na ngayon Say for example, chronological talaga to. Today is Black Saturday. So ngayon, kung ikaw ay isang Jew, uh, or ikaw ay isang Roman, hindi pala Jew kasi Black Saturday, which means it's your Sabbath. Hindi ka pwedeng lumabas. Hindi ka pwedeng magtrabaho. So Roman ka, Gentile ka, nasa Jerusalem ka, nakita mo yung cross. And it's an empty cross. Because Jesus is buried right now. Okay? Yesterday, 
Jesus was crucified. His body was taken out of the cross. Not just him, but even the bodies of the two thieves. Bakit? Kasi they're celebrating Passover, they're celebrating uh, Sabbath, and nag-request ang mga chief priest kay Pontius Pilate na tanggalin ang mga mga, mga bodies na yon in respect of the celebration. So the cross is empty. Jesus is dead at that time. He is buried. Now, he's not mostly dead. Okay? He's not like Wesley, the farm boy who turned out to be Captain, you know, Princess Bride. He's not mostly dead. He's really dead. He's totally dead. He's dead, dead. Wala na siyang buhay. Unlike some other religion na nagsasabi na Jesus did not die on the cross, it's actually somebody else who died. Some others are saying na hindi siya namatay talagang, hinimatay lang siya. No, he's really dead. The cross is empty. He's dead. He's buried. But praise God that three days later, the tomb was also empty. Because he is risen. He is alive. And if he's not, if he was not alive, if he did not rise from the dead, your faith and my faith is futile. Walang saysay ang ating pananampalataya, pagtitiwala, kung ang Panginoong Jesus ay nanatiling patay. Kaya napaka-importante po ng resurrection. At napaka-importante na alam natin na ang resurrection ay hindi lamang uh, hindi lamang siya totoo dahil nababasa natin sa Biblia, hindi lamang totoo dahil sinabi ng pastor nyo, sinabi ng mga ninuno natin, totoo siya dahil nangyari siya in the history of the world. It was an event, a real event that happened. And today, we're going to look at that event and what it entails. Anong ibig sabihin nito ngayong nabuhay siya muli? Kasi last week, tiningnan natin ang event kung saan si Peter, he denied Jesus three times. Si Peter pa rin naman ang titingnan natin ngayon. At titingnan natin, ano ba yung nangyari na yun? Dahil sa resurrection, anong nangyari sa buhay ni Peter na ganun din ang nangyayari sa buhay natin. Dahil ang katotohanan noon, katotohanan pa rin naman hanggang ngayon. So in Matthew, or sorry, in Mark, Chapter 16, we'll be looking at verse 1 to 8, and then we're, we'll go to John 21, verse 1 to 19. That's why I said, we will get out of this place in the coolness of the night. Okay, so Mark chapter 1, or chapter 16, verse 1 to 3. When Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early in the first day of the week when the sun had risen, when they, went, uh, they went to the tomb. And they were saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? Who will roll away? Because silang lahat, puro sila mga babae. At mapapansin natin, mamaya, makikita natin na ang, ang stone na to ay napaka laki. Where are the men? Nasaan ang mga lalaki? Nasaan ang mga disipulong lalaki? Nasaan si Pedro? Si Santiago? Si Juan? Nasaan si Nathaniel? Si Bartolomeu? Nasaan si Matthew? Nasaan sila? Nagtatago. Ang mga babae, atatapang. Di ba sila nang pumunta eh? Paano nila nalaman kung saan si binurol ang Panginoon? Kasi sabi sa Matthew, nakita nila nung si, what's his name? Joseph of Arimathea, tsaka si Nicodemus, nilibing nila si Jesus, nilagay nila sa, sa libingan, kaya nilibing. Diba? Ay nakita nila kung saan. So ngayon pupunta sila. Kaya lang, may takip yun, may harang yun na malaking bato. At hindi lang yun. Yung mga Pharisees, Yung mga Sadducees, pumunta sila kay Pontius Pilato at sinabi nila na alam mo, sabi nung Jesus na to, siya ay mamamatay at three days later, siya ay mabubuhay. Kaya magpadala ka ng gwardiya para hindi siya ma, hindi manakaw yung katawan niya. 
Kasi sigurado kami na, baka na, na nakawin niya ng mga disipulo niya at sasabihin nila na buhay ang kanilang Mesaya. So akalain mo yun, ang mga disciples nagtatago, hindi nga nila naisip na totoo pala na ang Panginoon ay mabubuhay muli. Sino nakaisip? Yung mga kaaway. Di ba? That's interesting or ironic. So, yung kwento na to sa Ebanghelyo, sa Gospel, this is what you call another embarrassing detail. Kaya nga, totoo to kasi kung ikaw gumagawa-gawa ka ng storya, dapat hindi si Mary Magdalene, hindi si Mary the mother of James, hindi sa si Salome ang pumunta sa puntod ng Panginoon. Dapat si Peter. Dapat ang mga hero, sila ang pumunta. At hindi lang yun. Nung lanlaban ang mga gwardiya, di ba? Tinalo nila lahat. Kasi sila ang hero. Pero hindi eh. It's the women who went. At ang sabi nila, who will roll away the stone because it was very large. Si Mark, sinulat niya talaga that it was very large to make us understand na hindi kaya tong gawin ng mga babae. It was too heavy for them. And interestingly, tong mga babae na to, nung magising sila ng umagang yun at papunta sila sa Sa, sa burial place at nung tanong siya, sino yung magro-roll away ng stone? Hindi natin kaya. Hindi nila sinabi na wag na lang, uwi na lang tayo. Hintayin muna natin yung mga lalaki na magkaroon ng lakas ng loob. Alam mo, minsan, alam natin may pinapagawa ang Panginoon pero ang itsura niya, imposible. But you know what? Just show up. No, minsan sa buhay natin, no? Lord, paano ba itong mababago yung anak ko? Parang imposible na kung sino-sino na naka influence Parent, just show up. Lord, paano ba itong mabub- mababago yung asawa ko? Di ba? Ang bugnutin. Ang syungit. Di ba? Just show up. Wife, just show up. Kaya nabago ako ng Panginoon. Just show up. Di ba? What I'm saying is this. There are things that we cannot understand. There are things na parang imposible. Pero si God ang gagawa ng posibilidad sa buhay natin. The stone was rolled away. Kinanta natin kanina. The stone was rolled away. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe, and they were alarmed. Bakit? Sino in-expect nila? Si Jesus, na? Patay. Pagpasok nila, may ibang tao. Kung ikaw ba naman hindi ka matakot dun. Di ba? Hindi yung pagpasok nila ganun. Uy, may ibang tao. Ay, anong ginagawa mo rito? Hindi lang yun. Wala ang katawan ni Jesus. They were alarmed and he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. Do not be afraid. Do not be alarmed. See the place. You seek Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. You, they were expecting someone who's dead. They were expecting someone who has been crucified, who had gone through shame, injustice, defeat. God surprised them. Because no injustice, no defeat, defeat, no defeat can stop God. He will always overcome. Kaya nga sabi sa Matthew, seek first His kingdom and His righteousness and all these things will be given to you. He will always overcome. And I love this. See the place where they had laid Him. Our faith is based on evidence. Hindi siya yung gawa-gawa lang ng tao. Hindi siya inimbento. It is based on who God is 
it is based on what he has done, his character and his power. But go tell another embarrassing detail. Because at that time, ang mga babae po, they consider women as less than reliable witnesses. So kung ginawagawa to ng mga early Christians, ang ilalagay nilang first preachers, first heralds of the resurrection will be men. Para mas kapanipaniwala. As a matter of fact, nung pumunta ang mga babaeng ito sa mga disciples, nakalagay po sa Luke that they did not believe them. They thought it was wild. Siya nung ginawa. Si Peter at si John, tumakbo sila. Pumunta sila sa punto. At nung makita nila, wala si Jesus. Wala yung bangkay. Pero hindi rin nila nakita na buhay ang Panginoon. Don't get me wrong, wala pa nakakita at this time sa buhay ng Panginoon. Alam lang nila, wala ang, wala ang katawan doon at may nagsabi na buhay siya. So si Peter, nung makita niya yon, wala si Jesus doon sa loob. Si John, nakita niya rin, wala rin. Nakalagay, they were amazed. It's in another, uh, I think it's in Matthew. They were amazed. And you know what they did? Alam mo kung anong ginawa nila? Hindi sila bumalik doon sa mga kasama nilang disciples at sinabing, totoo nga, wala ang katawan ng Panginoon. Anong, alam mo ginawa nila? Because they were amazed, umuwi sila. <gasps> wala. Uwi na ang Hindi ko alam kung paano nangyari ito. Tingnan natin kung ano mangyayari, di ba? Mumuyi muna sila. At nung gabing yon nag-gather sila ulit. Nag-gather sila. Kasi sabi dito, go and tell his disciples and Peter that he is going back to you, going before you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. And they went out and fled from the tomb for trembling and astonishment had seized them and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. They said nothing to anyone. Now, some atheists would say, hindi totoo ang resurrection. Bakit? Eh, they said nothing to anyone. Paano nalaman? Tama? If they said nothing to anyone, paano nalaman ni Mark? Now, kailangan kasi context, mga kapatid. Alam niyo po ba sa Mark chapter 1, verse 44, ito yung sabi ni Jesus sa 10 lepers. Sabi niya, don't tell anyone. Napinagaling sila. Don't tell anyone, but go to the temple and show yourself to the chief priests so that they will see that you have been healed and will proclaim you healed. Sandali lang, akala ko ba, don't tell anyone, but pupunta kami sa chief priest. Context. Ibig sabihin nito, hindi nila pinagchismis to, pinagkalat. Delikado to. Anong ginawa nila? Pumunta sila sa mga disciples because the angel said, Go tell, the, this, this, tell his disciples and Peter. Pumunta sila sa Galilee, makikita nila si Jesus doon. Pumunta po ba sila sa Galilee? Hindi. Nagstay sila sa Jerusalem. Sigurista din ang mga disciples, ano? Nakita mo bang buhay si Jesus? Hindi. Pero may nagsabing buhay siya. Pumunta kayong Galilee. Kasi sabi niya, di ba dati, pag nabuhay siya, pupunta sila na sa Galilee at makikita-kita sila doon. Hindi sila pumunta. Nagpakita si Jesus. Remember that? They were in the room. The, the door was locked. And then, nagkukwentuhan sila. And biglang, nandun si Jesus. At anong sabi sa kanila ni Jesus? Anong ginawa ni Jesus? Eto yung mga disciples. Anong ginawa ni Jesus? Pinagbabatukan ba sila ni Jesus? Sabi ko, pumunta kayong Galilee. <laughs> Hindi. Anong sabi sa kanila ni Jesus? Peace be with you. Grabe si Jesus, ano? Tigas na ng ulo ng mga yun. Ano pang sinabi niya? Peace be with you. No? Ganon din sa atin. Ganon tayo mahalin ng Panginoon. Na kahit ang tigas ng ulo natin, gusto pa rin niyang bigyan tayo ng blessing. Blessing pa rin ang sinasabi niya. Hindi niya tayo minumura. When was the last time you murahize someone? Ano ba yung namumutawi sa labi natin? Blessing o mura? Ayan. Minsan hindi mura, pero the way you say it, Diba? Kaya nag ako kahapon. Dahil sa the way I said it. So yun, praise God. 
napatawad na ako. Hallelujah. Anyway, but go and tell. The first heralds of the resurrection are women. First heralds. Pero itong interesting. Tell his disciples and Peter. Hindi lang tell his disciples. Si Peter ba? Disciple? Bakit hindi na lang tell his disciples? Tell his disciples and Peter. Bakit? Kasi si Peter may ginawa eh. Di ba alam natin last week? Siguro nung narinig to nina Mary Magdalene, nasa isip nila, lagot nung si Peter na to. Tell the, his disciples and Peter to go to Galilee. Now Jesus showed up and, and we, 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 saw, we see that in Matthew, we see that in Luke, um, we also see that in John chapter 20. But what happened in Galilee? What happened in Galilee? Ito ngayon ang nangyari sa Galilee in John chapter 21, verse 1 to 19. So introduction pa lang po yun. Okay? Ito yung nangyari. So verse 1 to 19. Let me read the first five verses. After this, Jesus revealed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias or the Sea of Galilee. And he revealed himself in this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, the twin, uh, called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, sino ang sons of Zebedee? James and John. And two others of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. And they said to him, we will go with you. So naghihintay sila kay Jesus. Wala pa si Jesus. Ano sabi ni Simon? Let's go fishing. Para hindi tayo pumatay ng, ah, hindi, hindi tayo unproductive, let's go fishing. And they said, we will go with you. They went out and got into a boat, but that night they caught nothing. So they were in the Lake of Galilee. This is their area before because they were fishermen in Galilee. Just as, a, just as day was breaking, Jesus stood on the shore. Yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to them, children, do you have any fish? Now it's weird that Jesus will call them children, pero this is... Nung panahon nila, it's normal. Parang, parang tayo ngayon, parang sabi ni Jesus, mga dude, mga boys, mga bata. Di ba? May nahuli ba kayo? And they answered him, no. Wala silang nahuli. Anong nangyari sa Galilee? Nagpakita ulit si Jesus. And interesting yung nangyari. He, they said no, and here's what Jesus said. Cast the net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast it. Why on the right side of the boat? Because they were doing it on the wrong side. A joke has died. <laughs> so they cast it on the right side, not on the wrong side. And now they were not able to haul it in because of the quantity of fish. Now you're Peter. You're Peter. And John was there with you. And James. And you must be thinking, this event looks familiar. When was the last time this happened to John, to James, to Peter, and to Andrew? The first time they encountered the miracle of Jesus. In Luke chapter 5, verse 5 to 6, And Simon answered, Master, we toiled all night, and Luke took nothing. But at your word, I will let down my nets. And when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish and their nets were breaking. Ano nangyari sa Galilee? Bakit sinigol out si Peter? Because Jesus wanted to do something in Peter that will be passed down to us about what it means that he is now resurrected. Ang sabi natin last week, huwag nating tuldukan ang kamalian natin dahil ang Diyos ay nandyan para sa atin. Huwag nating tuldukan dahil ang Diyos mismo hindi na tinutuldukan ang mga kamalian natin. Ito yun. 
naglagay ng kama ang Panginoon sa kamalian ni Peter. At ito ngayon ang continuation. They enclosed a large number of fish. And here's the reaction of Peter. Nung una niyang ma-encounter si Jesus, he bowed down and he said, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. At ano sabi sa kanya ni Jesus, kung naalala niyo? From now on, you will be a fisher of men. That's the first encounter. The place of the lake was very familiar to Peter. And then, fast forward to John chapter 21, yung binasa natin kanina, yung event na to after the resurrection, sabi ni John, the disciple whom Jesus loved, sabi niya kay Peter, it is the Lord. Familiar yung miracle. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, for he was stripped for work. Kasi kanina, nung nag-fish nila, di ba, labas yung kanyang abs. So, sumuot siya ng outer garment niya. And what was his reaction? He threw himself into the sea. Nung una nilang encounter, nung hindi pa niya kilala ang Panginoon, kung gano'ng kabait, gano'ng kabuti, gano'ng katapat, Gano mapagmahal ang Panginoon? Anong sabi niya? Depart from me for I am a sinful man. Ngayon, ano yung reaction niya? Pupunta na ako kay Jesus. Pupunta ako kay Jesus. I know, nagkamali ko. Ano, nagkasala ako sa Kanya. Alam ko yun. Pero sa pinakita niya sa aking pagmamahal, namatay at nabuhay pang muli, Alam ko anuman ang kasalanan ko. It should not drive me away from God. Magkamali man ako. Sin breaks my relationship with God, but I have to draw near. Kailangan kong bumalik. Kailangan kong magrepent. So ang ginawa ni Peter, he threw himself into the sea, he swam, he went to, to Jesus. And when they got out on land, they saw a charcoal of charcoal fire in place and the fish laid out for them. So, punta siya kay Jesus. Tapos, ito yung strange dito. Pag punta niya kay Jesus, wala siyang sinabi. Alam mo yung may kasalanan ka? Husbands. Nangyari na ba ito sa inyo? Yung tinignan ka ng asawa, pero, alam mo may kasalanan ka, pero hindi mo alam ko ano. Tapos punta, hindi mo alam Nako, pag sinabi kong I'm sorry, tatanungin ako nito, for what? <laughs> Tapos siya nabing, basta if I've hurt you, I'm sorry. Anong sasabi ng asawa mo? Not good enough. Ah, di ba? So si Peter, punta siya kay Jesus, walang uspo. Hindi siya umimik. Basta alam niya lang, dyan ang Panginoon, Jesus did the miracle thing again, so alam niya, intact pa yung relationship nila. Gusto pa rin siya ng Panginoon. Valuable pa rin siya sa Panginoon. Okay? The, now, in John, dalawang, dalawang, dalawang event lang sa book of John where this phrase, a charcoal fire, is mentioned. One is here, and you know kung saan yung isa? John 18, 18. Now the servants and the officers had made a charcoal fire because it was cold. And they were standing and warming themselves, and Peter also was with them, standing and warming himself. Anong event to? The denial. So ngayon si Peter, familiar, yung miracle, swim siya, pagdating niya doon, charcoal fire. Alam yung pag-traumatize ka, yung Pag may nakita ka, bumabalik ulit. <gasps> Servant girl, you're one of them. Hindi, ah. Oh. Hindi, you're one of them. Eh. Hindi, ah. Oh. Hindi, you're one of them. Pares ka ng accent. Hindi, ah. Hindi ko na yung kasama, ya. Ah. Umiba yung accent. Naging ilonggo, eh, no? Charcoal fire. It's a place of failure. 
Lord, nakala ko ba kanina, place of relationship, okay na tayo. I'm a sinful man, pero lumapit ka sa akin. Now it's a place of failure again. But what's the message of Jesus to Peter in this place of failure? Peter, I can turn your place of failure into a place of restoration. I have not placed a period. I'm placing a comma. Or maybe an ellipsis. Dit, dit, dit. Pero sabi natin, as long as we're in Christ, the failure is not final. Charcoal fire. The next thing, sabi ni Jesus, come and have breakfast. May fish silang dala, pero pagdating nila, may fish na tsaka bread si Jesus. Galing ano? In the place of restoration is also the place of provision. But to manage our expectation, ang provision ni Jesus dito, enough lang. Hindi yung pagdating nila, um, di ba pagprutas kaeng-kaeng? Pag isda, ano tawag doon? Banye-banyera. Hindi yung pagdating nila, wow, banye-banyera. Yung isda, hindi. Enough lang for them to have breakfast. So here's the thing na gusto kong i-clarify sa ating mga mananampalataya. Pag sinabi natin, God will provide, hindi ibig sabihin, lahat tayo magiging milyonaryo. How I wish. Pero hindi lahat. Merong bang mga milyonaryo dito? Yes. Merong bang may mga more than enough? Yes. Merong bang nag-iisip ng, Lord, tuition fee na naman. Yes. Meron bang naku Lord. Hindi lang hindi, hindi ko na nga naabot yung break even na scam pa ako. Yes. Pero sa lahat ng yan God will provide. Amen. So wag mo i-compare ang buhay mo sa buhay ng ibang Kristiyano. Bakit siya Lord? Yan. Bakit siya may ganito? Ako wala. Because when Jesus restores, there will be provision. But that provision is enough for you to go on with the calling. No one of the disciples there asked him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and so with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus was revealed to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. And then, after breakfast, kumusta yung mga kwentuhan nyo around the table sa family? After dinner, after breakfast, after lunch, di ba? Oy, kumusta ka na? Oh, anak, kumusta na yung grades mo sa mga ano? Kumusta yung mga schoolwork nyo sa mga husband nyo? Oy, kumusta ang trabaho? Kay Jesus naman, eto yung conversation. After breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Si Peter ang kausap. Pag ikaw ang, pito sila, di ba? Peter, Thomas, the sons of Zebedee, apat, there was Philip, oh no, sorry, Nathaniel, and then two other disciples. Maybe one of the two other disciples is Andrew, I don't know. So ngayon, kumakain kayo, Tapos sabi ni Jesus ki, ki Peter, Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than this? Pag ikaw yung, ikaw si Thomas, ano kayo nasa isip mo? Lagot ka. Kasi <laughs> alam mo ginawa ni Peter, di ba? Do you love me? Ano sabi ni, ni Peter? Yes, Lord, I love you. You know that I love you. Ano sabi ni Jesus sa kanya? Feed my lambs. Peter, Second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, send my sheep. Simon, third time, do you love me? Peter was hurt. Peter was grieved. Peter was sad because he said to him the third time, do you love me? 
Peter was reminded of what he did in the past. But what he did not understand is that Jesus had to fully restore him and cut off that past. Because we cannot move forward and take hold of what Jesus wants us to have when we keep living in the past. When Jesus said, when you know, nang sabi ng Panginoon, when you repent, you are forgiven, pero ikaw, yung isang paa mo, nandun pa rin sa past mo. At nag-isip ka, bakit kaya ang buhay kristyano ko parang ang hirap? Baka yung isang paa mo, nandun pa sa past, sa failure, sa sin. At pinatawad ka na ng Diyos, pero ikaw hindi mo pa mapapatawad ang sarili mo. Peter was grieved because third time. But Jesus had other plans. Jesus did not say it three times to guilt trip him. Jesus said it three times to free him, to restore him. Feed my sheep. Truly, truly, I say to you, when you were young, this is about Peter. You used to dress yourself and walk wherever you wanted, but when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another will dress you and carry you where you do not want to go. This he said to show by what kind of death he was to glorify God. And after saying this, he said to him, follow me. So we're going to land this. Do you have anything? Do you have a catch? Nope. Put it in the right side of the boat. Come, have breakfast. Let's fellowship. The relationship is still on. Do you love me? Feed my sheep. Tend my sheep. Feed my sheep. Feed my lambs. Not only is the relationship still on, the calling is still on. Come, follow me. The mission is still on. In light of that great resurrection, our place of relationship is affirmed in love. Whatever you've done, whatever failures, whatever pagkukulang, it is affirmed in love. And because of that, we know that sin will always break our relationship with God. But the love of God will always call us to turn from sin and return to Christ. Remember that. The love of God will always call us to turn away from sin and return to God. Narinig nyo ba ang mantra ngayon? Love wins. Love wins, di ba? Anong ibig sabihin ng mga nagsasabi nun? Usually. Dahil mahal ako ni God, bababayaan ni God kung ano ang gusto kong gawin. Dahil mahal ako ni God, at mahal ko yung taong to, okay lang yun kay God. Love wins. Kahit ako lalaki, siya lalaki, gusto naming magsiping, gusto naming ikasal, Okay yon kay God. Siya babae, ako babae, gusto namin ng isa't isa, okay yon kay God. Ako may asawa, siya may asawa, gusto namin ng isa't isa, okay yon kay God. Maraming hindi okay sa asawa ko, pero okay kay God. Bakit? Eh, love wins eh. Mahal namin ang isa't isa. Hindi pa kami kasal, mahal namin ang isa't isa. Okay lang yon kay God. Love when God loves us, He will always take us out of sin, not into another sin. Mahal ko ang church. Magbibigay ako ng mas marami. Kaya kahit mangurakot ako dito, okay lang yung kay God. Tapos ikaw, minsan, yung kadil mo, alam mong Eh, hindi naman siya demonyo kasi tao siya. No? Pero alam mo kung ano-ano yung ginagawa niya. 
makikipag-deal ka pa rin sa kanya. Kasi anong sasabihin mo? Ah, the wealth of the wicked will be given to the righteous. <laughs> Ingat po tayo. Because the love of God will always take us away from sin into His holy presence. In the light of the resurrection, your relationship is affirmed. In the light of the resurrection, our place of failure is forgiven through love. You can't earn it. It is fully given, fully paid for. That's why we have an empty cross. Because Jesus died for our sin. But that's why we have an empty tomb because Jesus won over our sin. When we fail, the more we should run toward Jesus, not away from Jesus. Wag mong sabihin sarili mo dahil nagkasala ka, hindi ka na-attend ng church. Hindi ka na mag-fellowship. Yun ang gustong gusto ng demonyo. Tingnan mo yung katabi mo. Hindi yan demonyo. Kaya gusto niya mag-church ka. Tama? Okay. Nakakahiya na magkasala. Totoo. Pero mas nakakahiya ang hindi bumalik sa Diyos na nagmahal sa'yo. Na nagsakripisyo na namatay, na sugatan para sa iyo. In light of the resurrection of Christ, our place of calling is restored with love. Don't ever think that God does not value you anymore. And in light of that resurrection, I pray that you will continue to hear Jesus say, follow me. Not follow the church, not follow the pastor, follow Jesus. Amen. The love of Christ will not just take us away from sin, but will compel us, strengthen us, and empower us to follow Him. We cannot do it on our own, and we cannot do it alone. Wherever the presence of God is, that will be the place of grace for us. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. Can we all stand? So I don't know kung pumalakpak kayo dahil sa katotohanan ng word or dahil, ay, salamat, tapos na. <laughs> Pero hindi pa tayo tapos. I want to ask the music team to come as we continue to celebrate the resurrection. Lord, there are impossible things for us. Who will roll away the stone? Who will heal us? Who will provide? Who will restore? Who will give us the grace to forgive? Who will soften the heart of my wife, my husband, my children? Who will give me the favor in this calling of work and career? Who will give me wisdom? Who will give me discernment? And today we declare, it's Jesus all the way. And because of that, we receive the grace. If we are going to boast, we're going to boast about you. Kung gano ka kabait, gano ka katapat, gano ka kabuti. And so Lord, as we declare your praise, Holy Spirit, let your healing come in the name of Jesus. I pray for healing. I speak healing in the name of Jesus. And we receive it by faith. Healing in our bodies, those who are sick, those who have infirmities. God, I pray for a friend of mine who's having difficulty in her spine in the name of Jesus. I pray for Friends who have cancer, let your healing come in the name of Jesus. Lord, healing of the heart. Those who have been betrayed, those who have been hurt, healing of the mind. Yung mga nagsasabi na wala nang pag-asa, wala nang nagmamahal sa akin, hindi na ako mahalaga. Yung mga sabing hindi ko na kaya yung sitwasyon, Panginoon. Let your healing come in the name of Jesus. 
Let your provision come in the name of Jesus. Provide men, godly men, godly community, godly women, Lord, who will help us, strengthen us, journey with us. Provide your resources of finances, Lord, so that we can continue to walk in the journey of calling. Provide your restoration. Provide us with unity in the family. Provide us, Lord, with humility. Ikaw ang Diyos, hindi kami. May we always be in the place of grace. Because you promised you will never leave us nor forsake us. In Jesus' name, Amen. Let us raise both our hands as we worship our King. Yes, Lord. Your name is above all names, Lord. Your name, Your name, Lord. Your name is the highest. Your name is the greatest. Your Stands above
who among you received that very encouraging and powerful word? While I, was, while I was listening to Pastor Rev, I felt like, you know, the, the work of the resurrection power of Jesus wants to do a work of restoration. You know, Peter was restored back to the Lord. His calling, his love. And I believe there are people here, God wants to do a restoring work, a restorative work. Maybe you felt like may ninakaw sayo, Yung demonio, yung the, the enemy is trying to steal. The, the enemy has stolen that joy. And you know, you're beginning to be depressed. The enemy is trying to steal that faith and you are getting anxious. Maybe in, in your family, the Lord wants to restore your relationship with your, with your son or with your daughter. Maybe a relationship needs, uh, a restoration needs to be um, done in your marriage, whatever that is, I believe the Lord wants to do a, res- a work of restoration. The resurrection power of Jesus wants to do a work of restoration in your life. Maybe in your business there was something that was stolen from you, the Lord wants to restore it. And if that is you, I want you to lift your hands before the Lord. You want that work of restoration in your life. And it's the Word of God is clear. We heard it. The resurrection power of Jesus wants to do a work of restoration. Lord, you see these hands that are lifted up, Lord God. Kung ano man, Panginoon, yung tila ninakaw sa kanila or nawala sa kanila, Panginoon. Maybe the joy, Lord God. Maybe, Lord, the, the, the faith is waning, Lord God. Yung, yung demonya, Panginoon, sinusubukang nakawin yung aming kaligayahan, yung, aming, yung ligaya ng aming kaligtasan, Lord, the joy of our salvation. Lord, I thank you that today is a day of restoration for them, Lord God. Or maybe, in a, yes, come on, let's give a clap of praise for that. Lord, I speak restoration over every relationship in the family. Maaring matagal nang hindi kayo nakikibuan, hindi kayo nag-uusap. The Lord wants to restore that relationship in the name of Jesus. Nothing is impossible in the name of Jesus. Nais panumbalikin ng Panginoon kung ano may nawala sa'yo. And nothing can stop God from doing His response. Work of restoration, Lord God. Lord, we receive your word today, Lord God, and we claim your restoration, Lord God, even over every marriage, Lord, that that is on the rocks, Lord. I speak restoration, Lord God. Let there be a renewed love between the husband and the wife, Lord. Or maybe mag-ama, mag-ina, Panginoon, na nagkaalitan, Lord. Restore the relationship. In the name of Jesus, we receive your restoration, Lord. Thank you that the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is the same power that you have given us, Lord God. To receive your restoration, Lord God. Lord, thank you. We appreciate your word. You receive your word. Let your word be planted deep in our hearts, Lord God. And Lord, we look forward to exciting days ahead of us full of faith and hope in you, Lord God, that the best is yet to come. And exciting times are ahead because of the resurrection power of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. We praise you and we worship you, Lord. We receive your restoration, Lord. In Jesus' name, this we pray. And everyone say amen and amen and amen. God bless you. You are dismissed. See you next Saturday.